I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Razza Banif, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're here at the London O2, uh, ahead of Marshall Shields, or Shields Marshalls, rather. With me, former world champion of Manchester's finest, million dollar crawler, and um, a beer and burger, mate. A beer and burger, mate. I'm a proper lad now, ah, but yeah, no, only a few, and then heading back to Manchester. Uh, but yeah, no, it's good, it's always the It's good to, um, I know it's a lot of the big shows now, they're doing sort of, a bit like a grand rival type thing and it's good, it's good, it's great for the media and it's good for the fighters, so yeah. I think last time I saw you was in Bolton maybe for the Watson Mentor, Lyndon Arthur. Yes, it was, yeah. I, I had a few fighters on, didn't I? Yeah, I had a few fighters on, so busy with that. I'm trying to think, was it the week later? I had Rhiannon Dixon on in Nottingham. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting now, uh, a few are getting new dates. Oh no, I was back in Bolton last week. Um, so now, yeah, a few of them are getting new dates out again before Christmas. You know, sometimes when fighters retire, the the, the worry is, is how do they keep themselves busy? And, yes. you know, they miss the training camp and they've got a lot more free time. You know, you're, you're not just managing, you're coaching, yeah. you're doing punditry and a bit of everything. You're yeah. enjoying it. Uh, yes, definitely. No, of course. And then I'm, I'm still around boxing, which really helps fill that void so you don't miss the buzz as much. Like, honestly, I genuinely can't wait for the fight weekend and it's great to be at something like this now not just because there's burgers and beer on on a tap but just like it's just nice being around it all and it's that buzz of a big fight weekend that's what this fight has certainly got shield marshall uh, obviously was delayed due to unfortunate circumstances yeah. complete out of our control how much do you think it will affect the condition of, of the fighters yeah. and more importantly clarissa because she went back to america Traveling and then come back from so you'd certainly think with the traveling that would it would have hindered Clarissa more than it would have Savannah. Um, but listen, girl, both girls, listen, go back. There was Olympians 10 years ago, from 10 years since then, they're very, very experienced. It's some of that they'll be able to deal with. But yeah, no, there's no denying the travelling wouldn't have been ideal. Um, they would have lost a week or so of training, or Clarissa would have. Um, and then you could argue that maybe Savannah's a bit tighter at the weight, so she's had to hold that weight a little bit longer. So people look at it from both sides. Um, you could you could question both things, and again in like the co-main with um, Maya and Baumgartner. Again, Michaela's a very big girl for the weight, so it's her who's had to hold the weight that a little bit longer. But there again, some people might argue it's done a good because she's um, she's not been able to blow up. She's had to get strong and sort of stay in the weight. Both fiery characters both have said a lot over the last couple of weeks yeah. and couple of months, but. Everyone I speak to, everyone I've spoken to today are kind of mixed between Caesar Marshall. How's your position? It's on, um, on which fight? Shields Marshall. It's tough. Listen, I'm, I'm going with Savannah, but it's, it is a very tough fight to call. Listen, you forget how good Clarissa Shields is. We don't forget, but people, I don't think they understand just how good she is. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. I, I've said this story many times, but I first seen her as a 17-year-old girl at, um, at holding camp for the USA Olympic 2012 team. And I, I watched her and I was literally phoning on it. Listen, get on this girl from America at middleweight to win the gold medal. Trust me. And she did. She went and well, I'd never seen how like it. You know, she was sparring. I knew they had to bring, they had to bring sparring in for her. Because the other girls around that weight from a few other nations, it, it was just, it wasn't competitive. Um, so, but I just feel that the form is with Savannah, and I think that could be a big thing. Um, it might take a few rounds to get going, but I think when Savannah gets into a room, she's very difficult. And I'm going with Savannah on points, but it's a great fight. And Clarissa, you know, listen. She might not carry the one punch power that Savannah does, but boxing skills, way she judges distance, um, you know, that's that's something that she probably got the advantage in. Obviously, I spoke to Clarissa just now, and, and she feels like she's in great shape. She says, I'm not giving any excuses for the four weeks. She's very confident, she's very confident and I think with that, you've got to. Um, You've got to take a little bit from that. This is, you know, she, I think she feels a little bit disrespected in that. She thinks, although the amateur fight, however many years ago it was, she feels like 
too many people are looking into that and she might prove us right she might prove us right but I think she feels sort of a little bit disrespected that her achievements what she's done at multiple weights uh, as a professional fighter aren't getting the respect that it deserves well, we look forward to um, a great fight um, on Saturday night. And, and I just want to go back to last week, Chris Subban Jr., yes. Conor Ben. Um, when you heard kind of the rumours, and I just want to make this very, very clear before I ask you any questions that, of course, there's going to be a full investigation. So we don't know, though. We has got his right to reply, to defend himself, and, you know, we'll see. But, yeah, go on. What was your instant reaction when you heard? Disappointment. Um, obviously, the, the drug that's been found even more disappointment but you know hopefully he has a reasonable explanation to that uh, you know obviously we've got to be honest at the minute it doesn't look good at all um, but everyone deserves the right to reply and um, only time will tell won't it you know one of the things I want to touch on is Chris Eubank Jr's weight the agreed rate was 157 on, on, on Friday we saw how vocal his father was about that weight on Saturday, he posted a picture just under 160. Yes. Three, are we assuming that three pounds was the limit? I really hope not. I really hope not. Um, whether that, I listen, one person who's, there's not been many people who's come out looking well from the past, from last week's incident. One person who's, I wouldn't say he's put his profile as, but who's the support for him who's changed the public's opinion off lot is Chris Eubank Jr. Hopefully it was not £3 because you'd, you'd think that'd be a little bit dangerous. Uh, and I, I, we're saying hopefully, but he came in at under 160. Surely he did, he did. if he was allowed to eat more, he would have been a lot heavier. You would think so. You would think so. Listen, I don't know. And listen, I'm not saying he wasn't. Sure, but we don't know for sure that's exactly what he weighed, whether that's a bit of games or not. And it might not be. Absolutely might not be, but... I'm just saying, if it was, if that's true, and he at that time was only allowed to put three pound on, I think it's a little bit scary and uh, dangerous, especially when he dragged himself down to the weight that he was that he was going to drag himself down to. And the picture he posted of it, you could tell by his face that he looked. He was very dry, very dry, and um, he certainly hadn't had enough time to put on to fully hydrate to fully hydrate which he probably wasn't going to do anyway realistically fighting at that weight but also with the claws then yeah it looks worse and then obviously with the failed drug test it now looks 10 times worse again it looks it looks makes it look even more dangerous but i'm sure there's be a lot of questions asked and uh, they'll be they'll, they'll need answering we know Connor might be out for a little while while this investigation takes place in the background, but Chris will want to get back in the ring. Who, who kind of do you see him getting in the ring with, maybe even this year? I'd love to see him fight my mate um, Liam Beefy Smith, I think. Anfield? Anfield, yeah, it's, it's uh, tell you what, it's, yeah, it would, uh, it would be summer, wouldn't it? It really would be summer. Uh, there's not many times I go to Anfield. Uh, went in Liverpool to win but obviously Liam being a good mate that would be the case there but listen you know I like Junior but uh, I think it's a fantastic fight I remember seeing him spar years ago uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a spar where you thought I'd love to see this in a small glove so hopefully we will see that one day no, absolutely and you may carry on with your beer you may carry on with your burgers but I will have a few more beers and a few more burgers because um, I can I mean, yeah because you can and yeah we'll catch up with you on uh, Saturday thank you night very much Thank you. Anti Crawler, IFL TV, thank you very much. Good to see you, man. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here, and this has been like a therapy session.